What's up, peeps? What's up, church? Welcome to a Saturday night service. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. Um, I'm so excited for tonight, for what God is going to do tonight. I'm ready just to, to, to give, to receive, and to apply what God is going to do tonight. Hey, but I want to show you, I want to show you a peep right here that we have helping out um, in our in our service. So can we can we bring Leo? It's Leo here. Hey Leo, hey, come come over here. This is Leo right here. Hey, keep your distance, please. Okay. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, this is Leo and he is one of our production uh, members. So he's here every week helping out. So I just want to say thank you, Leo. Thank yeah. you. Are you ready for tonight? Yes. Yes, we're ready. We're ready. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for being here. So we're ready to worship. We're ready to receive. Um, so just get ready, you know, and get together with your family for what God is about to do in your life. Mountains are still being moved, strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here.
Now I want to invite you to be part of what God is doing in this house. And I want to share with you what Proverbs 11:24 says. And it says, the world of the generous, generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy, ooh, stingy gets smaller and smaller. So what Proverbs 11:24 is telling us here is that when we have a spirit of generosity, we create the way, we create opportunities. If it wasn't because you are giving to this church, all of this, this that, that you're seeing, that you're being part of, would not be possible. So I wanna invite you, I know it's not easy just to be generous, but I wanna invite you to create a discipline of generosity and to, in reality, become part of what God is doing in this church. There is three ways for us to give and be part of what God is doing in this church. And that is through our app. That is you sending out your envelope or just you can just go ahead and drop it off in our mailbox here in the temple. So I want to invite you to be part of what God is doing in this church. We are in our last part of Altitude and I'm very excited about this, this part, part four, which is transformation that's right transformation today I'm preaching about transformation and we've been talking about spiritual development we've been talking about spiritual growth but before we we look at spiritual growth before we look at spiritual development we need to look at transformation transformation in our hearts transformation in our mind and perhaps a transformation of a change in structure a change in condition a change in character we must look at God's plan of transformation for our, our lives. You know, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan of transformation for your life. So right now, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and say transformation for my life. Transformation. Come on, leave an emoji, whatever it is. Go ahead, leave it in the chat. Transformation. Today, I am preaching about transformation. And you know, the question is, how does God change us? How does God change us? And you know, one of the things about God is that He loves you just the way you are. God loves you unconditionally, but He loves you way too much to let you stay the way that you are. So He wants us to grow. God's plans for our life is growth. God's desire is that we are transformed and become more and more like Jesus. God's goal is to transform you into total Christ-likeness. That's right. God's goal is to transform you into total Christ-likeness. And you're probably wondering, well, well how is God going to change my life? How is God going to bring any type of change to my life? You know, many of us have this thought in our head where, 
all of a sudden we are changed from one day to the next, where transformation just happens within 24 hours. But that's a myth. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. It, change, transformation doesn't just happen from one day to the next, where all of a sudden, you know, you are filled with love and then you love everybody. You know, you, you, you are changed completely. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. Transformation doesn't work that way. And I want to take you to a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where Paul, Paul here is talking about God's spirit at work within us. And he says, as God's spirit works within us, we are being transformed to become more like Christ. This change from one degree of glory to another comes from the Lord. And I think what stands out about the scripture here is that God's spirit is at work within us. That's right. God's spirit is at work within us. We are being transformed. And the key word here is being, being transformed. Go ahead and highlight that part. Why? Because being is a, a, a continual process in your life. And I'm here to tell you this evening, this night, that God wants to continue work in your life. But too many of us have settled for what we see. Too many of us have conformed with what we see. And I like the, the message. Gives it a little twist. The message says that our lives become gradually brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. Now, my desire is not for your life... To, to, to become dimmer and dimmer, you know, for your life to dim down. No, no, no. But my desire for your life is that it may be gradually become brighter and brighter as you continue in this journey. Come on, my, my desire for your life, my desire for your life is for you to develop Christ-like convictions, to think like Jesus, Christ-like character, to feel like Jesus and Christ-like conduct, to act like Jesus. If you are being transformed in how you think, feel, and act, if you're not being transformed in how you, how you think, feel, and act, you can forget about growth in your life. God is requiring growth out of our life. And if, if we're not being transformed in the way we think, in the way we feel, in the way we act, we're not going to see any new levels in our life. We are not going to reach the altitude of Christ. We are not going to reach the standard of Christ. We can forget about that, but God here is encouraging us. God here is challenging us that it starts with the way we think. And I want to share three points tonight, three points that I believe is going to help you make a shift in your life and stir something in your heart, stir something in your mind. And point number one is transformation requires coaching. Transformation requires coaching. We grow faster with a tutor. We grow faster with a trainer. Hey, Shout out to Josa, my trainer. He's been my trainer for the past few months. Shout out to Josa, who has helped me through these last few months, you know, uh, lose eight pounds, no lie. Eight pounds, that's right. You, you're like, were, were you really that big, Aaron? Well, I, I can tell. You know, I lost eight pounds. Shout out to Josa, my trainer. We grow faster with a coach. We grow faster with a spiritual partner, with a mentor. Even the best of the best at their craft need a coach. That's right. Even the top-notch producers, artists, you know, superstars, they all need a coach in their life. In the scripture, we see tons of coaches and mentors. For example, Joshua was coached by Moses. Elijah was coached by Elijah. And Timothy was coached by Paul. In 2 Timothy, verse, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 says, Timothy, this is Paul spe speaking to Timothy, I want, you to, I want you now to take the things that I've taught you and pass them on to the other faithful man who will be able to pass them on to the others. And here is uh, Paul taught, you know, speaking into the life of Timothy, and he's saying, hey, I want you to now take the things that I've taught you, everything you learned from me, and I want you to pass them on to the other faithful man. I mean, how awesome is that? Is that we see Timothy being coached by Paul. I mean, transformation is going to require coaching. Transformation requires someone speaking into your life. That's right. 
Transformation doesn't happen just by yourself, but transformation requires coaching. And too many of us have been, ha- have been shutting down people that want to speak life into us. Too many of us throughout the years, throughout our Christian life, through our journey, have been shutting down people that want to speak life into you. And you, and you wonder and you question why there's no type of transformation in your life. But that's because you continue to shut down the people that really want to speak life into you. And then you question why you can't, you know, handle relationships with other people. And then you question why your character seems to be the, the same, at the same level it was five, ten years ago. And then you wonder why you have tons of issues with, you know, your family. Tons of issues with the people around you. But I believe that transformation requires coaching. And I believe somebody has been trying to coach you. Somebody has been trying to speak life into you. But you've just been shutting them down. You're like, nah, I don't want to. But I'm here to tell you this evening that transformation requires coaching. And number two, transformation requires learning the truth. Transformation requires learning the truth. Learning the truth is important for change. That's right. If we're going to do any type of change, we need to know the truth. We need to know the truth. In John chapter 17, verse 17, we see where Jesus is. is, is Jesus, Je- Jesus said this. Use the truth to make them complete. Your word is truth. And Jesus here is saying, use the truth to make them complete. To make them complete is also known as sanctification. To make them complete, to make them whole, is also known as separating yourself from the world. And if there's if there's going to be any type of transformation in your life, then it's going to require for you to learn the truth. Because there's way too many people out in this world that think they can come to church, think they can play this whole Christian role, and never, never apply the truth to their life. But 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 Jesus, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the only one who claimed to ever be the truth. And I'm here to tell you that as you draw closer and closer to Jesus, the more grace and truth for your life. If you really want to make a change in any area of life, you need to know and apply the truth in that area. For example, if you want to make changes in your finances, you have to find out what God has to say about that and apply that truth. Because here's the goal. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 says, and I love this because Paul, if we go to, let's go to, let's go to, I'm going to take you to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. I want to take you there for a moment. This is Paul talking about certain individuals. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or made a lie sound like the truth. You know, you will know the level of your maturity when someone comes to you with their opinions, ideas, and subjective subjective thoughts, subjective ideas. You, you, you will know the level of your maturity, the way you respond to that. And I love this because Paul is saying, hey... You will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or made a lie sound like the truth. How many, how many of you have been witnesses or have been part of a situation where somebody has made a lie sound like the truth and then you go on believing that lie? And then you pass it on to relatives or family, mem- family members, friends. You pass it on. And by the time you, you know like, that was a lie, that wasn't true. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, we go on to read verse 15. It says, instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more like Jesus, who is the head of his body and the church. Who is the church? You and I are the church. You and I are the church. We are the church. And the goal is that we hold to the truth in love, that we hold to the truth in grace, becoming more and more like Jesus, who is the head of his body, the church. You and I are the church. Now, why does God say you got to know the truth if your life is going to be transformed? Why does God say that? That you you, you got to know the truth if there's going to be any type of transformation in your life. Well, I, I, I can say this, right? I can say this, in, 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 our, in my marriage with my wife, for, for example, 
you know, there, there's certain things that we have to come into agreement. There's, there's certain things that we have to come and talk and dialogue and say like, hey, you know, this, 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 this happened or I struggle with this or I have a problem with this, but I, I'm, bringing it, I'm bringing it out to light. I'm bringing it out to, I, I want you to know the truth. I want you to know the truth. And if there's going to be any type of transformation in our marriage, then my wife and I need to know the truth. Of, of, of our stance with one another. Because if we don't know the stance, if we don't know the truth of our stance with one another, most likely there's not going to be any type of growth in our marriage. There's not going to be any type of transformation in our marriage. And Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. We have to know the truth. And then if we go on to read in, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, it says, since you have heard all about him, you have learned the truth that is in Jesus. And this is Paul saying, since you have heard all about him, you have learned that the truth, the truth that is in Jesus. And transformation comes through the truth, comes through knowing the truth. And point number three, transformation requires new thinking. I know many of you, many, many of you have heard this time and time and time again. Transformation requires new thinking. If there's going to be any type of altitude in your spiritual development, in, in, in your growth with God, then transformation is going to require that new thinking for your life. And I want you to capture this. All change starts in the mind. All change starts in the mind. The way you think determines the way you feel. And the way you feel will determine the way you act. I'll say this again. The way you think determines the way you feel. And the way you feel determines the way you act. If you want to change the way you act, don't start, by, don't start with that. Don't start there. If you want to change the way you feel, and if you want to change the way you, you have to change the way you think. So if I want my life to be transformed, I have to think in new ways. If I really want to see transformation in my life, then I am going to have to stop conforming to the patterns of this world. I'm going to have to stop conforming to the ways of this world. If there's going to be any type of transformation, you want to be transformed? You want to be transformed? I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 19. And this is Paul giving us advice. He is giving us advice. He is giving advice to the church. He's giving advice to us. And this is Paul. Paul saying, don't keep living as the ungodly do. For they are hopelessly confused in their thinking. Their closed minds are full of darkness. They're far away from the life God gives because they have shut their minds and hardened their hearts against him. Man, they are far away from the life that God is giving because first they have shut their minds and then their heart has, has gotten hard. They don't care anymore about right or wrong. Man, how many of you have, have come across an individual who says, man, who cares about right or wrong? Who cares about that? Like, you know, whatever, man. Your, your, your opinion is the way of going. Your, your subjective idea is the way of going. How you feel, go about it. Right? And Paul here is saying, they don't care anymore about right or wrong. And they've indulged themselves in all kinds of immorality, evil thinking, and constant desire for more. I mean, how crazy is it that this was written 2,000 years ago? And this could have been written yesterday. This applies to today. This applies to this. is Paul giving advice to his church. Paul is reminding us that, hey, there is constant desire in your life for more and more and more. That more and more of the things that are far from God. And if we jump to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, and he says, Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal in your thoughts and attitudes. Paul is saying, hey, instead, man, there has to be a spiritual renewal in the way you think, in the way you go about your character, in your attitude. Let the spirit change your way of thinking. Let your spirit change the, your way of thinking. That's right. Let the spirit of God direct you and change your way of thinking. If there's going to be any type of transformation, well, it's going to require that you, you, you learn a new way of thinking. Now, you can say, well, Aaron, wh why? Why do, I, why do I have to learn a, a new way of thinking? Why? Well, what's the goal? 
the goal, the goal is the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I'm here to tell you, rather than changing the way we think, we try to change the way we act. Rather than changing the way you think, you try to change the way you act. Most of us try to change the way we act without changing the way we think. And too many of us Christians are stuck right there where we think that we have to change the way we act. But God is saying, hey, it doesn't start there. It starts with renewing your mind. Transformation starts with renewing your mind. Transformation does not begin with changing the way you act. But transformation begins with changing with the way you think, which leads how you feel, and how you feel will lead you to actions. And the scripture here is telling us, hey, it, just, it doesn't start with you changing the outward appearance. It doesn't change by you looking good before other people, but it, it starts in the mind. It starts in the heart. Trying to change the way you act without letting God change the way you think is, can, can look pretty ridiculous, right? I mean, think about it for a moment. Let's say that, that I'm tying apples to a bare apple tree. I, 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 I go to my backyard and the apple tree is just bare. It, it doesn't have any apples, it doesn't have any leaves, and I start tying apples to the tree, right? I start, and I, and I call my wife Josie, I'm like, hey Josie, look at the apple tree, look at all the apples on the tree. You know, she would look at me ridiculous, right? She would look at me crazy, like, what? Like, you, you, just, you just changed it yourself. You're trying to change the outward appearance of the tree by tying apples to it, but it doesn't work that way. And I'm here to tell you that it's many times with our Christian life, it's the same way. We try to, 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 to transform. We try, God, we, we're trying to change the way we act when God is trying to transform the way we think. And too many of us try to tie visible things to our spiritual life. Many times we try to tie visible things to our spiritual life. And I'm here to tell you that the apple is an inside job. The fruit is an inside job. It happens inside our mind. It begins with changing the way we think. And many of us try to do the same thing with our Christian lives, but I'm here to tell, I'm here to tell somebody that it doesn't be, it doesn't, transformation doesn't start with your actions, but transformation starts with the way you think. And too many of us have been stuck in the past. Too many of us have been like, man, like I have not been able to transform. Or too many of us trying to act like transformers. We, we want to be transformers where all of a sudden you, 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 you like get up and you want to be transformed, but it doesn't happen that way. No, 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 no. But I'm here to tell you this evening, tonight, that transformation starts with a new way of thinking. Transformation starts requires a coach. Transformation requires new thinking. And I want to take this moment to pray for you. I want to take this moment to pray for you that are, you know, you may be watching at home or you may be watching from your car, wherever you're at. And I want to take this moment to pray. So as you are where you are, I just, just close your eyes or bow your head or whatever, you know, just, just don't get distracted for a moment. Heavenly Father, God, I, I know there's too many Christians out there that have been wondering about, you know, new levels, spiritual development, the spiritual growth. Too many of us have been wondering how to go about it. Too many of us have been struggling with this issue on, on you changing us. But I know that somebody today has been convicted. I know that somebody today, somebody's heart has been touched. Somebody's heart, mind has been touched. I know, God, you, your, your word has spoken today. Your word has brought clarity to people that are confused at home. Your word has brought new hope, new perspective. And I pray for somebody right now that may be struggling with growth in, in, in their spiritual life, God. And that if there's going to be any type of transformation, then it's going to require for us to learn a new way of thinking. Jesus, this evening I invite you into my heart, I invite you into my mind, and I accept you as Lord and Savior over my life. Thank you, Lord, amen. A word without application, it's just a word. So I wanna invite you to apply the word that we heard by my husband tonight. It really makes a difference when we just hear the word, but when we apply the word. 
So I want to challenge you for you to apply the word that God has given us tonight. Also, I just want to thank you for connecting tonight, for making the time to connect with your family. And, and reality is the best investment that we, that we can do to grow in our relationship with God. So thank you so much for being part of what God is doing in this house. Also, we have a couple announcements. We have on Sundays our Spanish service at 11 a.m. And we also have a kids service. So if you have um, if you have any little ones, we want to invite you to connect to connect them every Sunday at 12:15. Again, thank you so much for being here and have a great week.